And open up with a gong. Ready? Old tradition, old tradition, old gong. Open up the, open up the day with a gong. Good morning. My name is Marcus Conti. I am the sole plaintiff in Conti vs. D S N Y, investigative journalist of sorts, and uh, I got a lot going on today. I'm going to. I just want to make. Uh, just want to reiterate some of the dates. Uh, most important date is this Wednesday, March 7th. Today is Saturday, March 3rd, by the way. The date is uh, Wednesday, March 7th at 2 p.m. at uh, New York Supreme Court Appellate Division, 1st Department at 27 Madison Avenue. And uh, we'll be there at 2 p.m. We are on the calendar. Put all the information down below. The address is, again, 27 Madison. It's a nice courthouse. Madison Square Park, <clears throat> 23rd Street-ish. Right. Um, the other date is the New York City uh, Council Oversight Committee um, on solid on sanitation and solid waste management, uh, which has jurisdiction over the Department of Sanitation, New York City Sanitation, will meet Tuesday, March 13th at 1 p.m. at City Hall, New York City. That is an open forum that's after this um, date. Again, as of, as of yet, the City Council has not um, acknowledged uh, any wrongdoing whatsoever by DSNY. They've asked no public questions. They've released no statements, um, despite repeated um, requests to do so. So that mark that date. I'll put the calendar down below. I'll also put their emails down below. You can reach out to the five members of the uh, City Council on your own. <clears throat> so... So those are really the uh, the big dates I want to do. We're going to do a uh, it looks like we're going to do a press conference, right? Where um, this is a um, this process is uh, the appeal. Okay, Conti vs. DSNY is an appeal, and the object is to overturn the lower court's decision to find no probable cause for discrimination or retaliation for them firing me for whistleblowing, right? <clears throat> So that's what the uh, uh, court of a, the the appeal appellate division is going to view. Now, there's three ways that they can. They, there's multiple ways that they can do that. Sometimes they want to hear what's called uh, oral argument from the floor, meaning that I go and I stay on the plaint, plaintiff side of the bench, side of the whatever, and then on the other side is corporate counsel of the city. And they argue on behalf of the city, right? In this case, the five judges have already made the decision that this will be ruled on summary judgment, meaning that there is no hearing, right? They base it on everything, all of the written documents that I provided and the city provided, and they review the whole docket and then they cast the decision. So again, I've never, I've never had a day in court I've never been heard from the floor. There's no sworn testimony on their end at all. Everything I write, because it's 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 firsthand, is basically you know uh, testimony. So that's you know a acting as your own attorney, as when you are the plaintiff and you are writing the, the depositions and presenting it to court. That in effect is a sworn. Um, affidavit, right? So that is, and that is my testimony, and it has not changed and will not change. It is what it is, and it is uh, what happened. So, summary judgment. So, why go down to the court? Why even be there? If I don't have to be there, you know, you can, you can go inside and you can watch them, you know, shuffle paper. Again, I'm a rank amateur. I don't know what's going on, right? I, could, I might, I know that uh, you can go and sit in the court and watch them, uh, you know, talk about the case, but. Uh, no one will be heard from the floor, right? Can't be, all right? So that that's that's the bottom line on uh, on that date. So we'll do something outside on the um, 
out on the steps, okay? So I'll make my, um, I guess this will be official call and calling out to uh, the media uh, press conference at, uh, on that day, the 7th, March 7th at 2 p.m. We'll be on the court steps and, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll live stream. We'll definitely make, make video of it, no doubt. So what else is going on in the news? I've been watching. I'm a little concerned about the um, the the uh, censorship that we're seeing as we lead. I keep saying, you know, leading into the uh, 2018 midterm elections, um, you know, it's not about getting your vote. It's about getting the perception that their candidates are okay and and then validating the cheating that goes on, especially the confirmed cheating that goes on in the you know, Democratic Party. So what are we seeing? I, you know, my prediction is we're going to continue to see an onslaught of uh, censorship, First Amendment um, rights violations across the board. We're already seeing it. I, almost every um, commentator, in the independent commentator that I follow, in some form or another, has complained of censorship, whether their videos are being demonetized on YouTube, uh, whether they're being outright... Uh, blocked and and put in what they're calling the YouTube jail <laughs> where they can't stream for a, for a month or a year or whatever, six to 90 days. On Facebook, we're seeing the same thing where people are being censured on Twitter, which I'm not really uh, that. I just read Twitter. I don't tweet, tweet. But uh, a lot of people there are being um, uh, censored. So we are on, we are in Slipper, we're on a slippery slope now where the mainstream media knows factually that they have lost the narrative, the a lost ability to manufacture the consent anymore, right? It's what um, Noam Chomsky always says, that the mainstream media's job is to, uh, well, it's the job of the, the, uh, the, 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 the ruling class right now to create a uh, consent Right to manufacture consent so that they can carry on uh, the the war profiteer, the pharmaceutical profiteers, right? Keep the money machine going, right? So, in this respect, as we enter 2018, is the the consent is that the elections are, are fair and and legal and and everybody agrees on it and such, uh, but that's really not the case at all, it's, you know. So. Um, you know, I wrote a note here. 2016 election was rigged to nominate establishment pick Hillary Clinton over the People's Choice Bernie Sanders. That's really what's going on here. They're trying to make it more about Trump rigging the election against Hillary Clinton, which is, you know, factually incorrect. And you know, the the, the idea that somehow Russia was responsible for hacking the DNC and funneling all the information into you know the, the, the Russians <laughs> they released it publicly right you know Seth Rich right? his name's coming up again Seth Rich right? who's Seth Rich if you don't know who Seth Rich is you, you do some homework Seth Rich is you know not even speculative, speculative at this point but was in fact uh, an insider at the DNC, DNC. He was a Bernie Sanders supporter and is widely uh, believed to have been uh, one of several people who leaked the DNC email information to WikiLeaks, right? Because they knew that um, uh, they knew that the election was being rigged for Hillary Clinton and that the people that were supporting Bernie Sanders were getting the shaft, right? And so a couple of brave souls. There's also another name that's fallen uh, by the wayside, which was uh, Hillary Clinton's um, number one guy, uh, Eric Braverman, who has disappeared. Okay, well, he's out in England. Right. So a lot of people floating around right now that know the know the facts. And uh, but the uh, Seth Rich stuff is is coming. You know, it's, it's, it's widely believed that the uh, in the intel community that that was a uh, murder and cover up to prevent 
you know, prevent the, that, uh, to, 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 to find blame and push the blame on someone else. They got caught cheating, and so Seth Rich exposed it, or Seth Rich and others exposed it, and now he's dead. So stakes are high, you know. Yeah, there's, um, I saw a piece that I wanted to talk about it. What is, what is the First Amendment? What is the right to free speech, right? What I'm doing right now, I have the right to free speech, right? I could say whatever I want. I'm not, I'm not um, attacking anyone. I'm just, it's public opinion. It has, it's my opinion and it affects public opinion, right? It's, it, it's my opinion on public opinion and public safety and public uh, education, right? So that is a guarantee uh, in the First Amendment and uh, that's what I'm doing. But where am I doing it? Doing it on YouTube, right? This is a YouTube video. YouTube is a corporation owned and controlled by Google, right? So, do I have a free? Do I have a right to free speech and to to um, to speak in an open forum like this? Whatever I want to say, damn right I do. Damn right I do. You can't censure me and and say, oh, you're you're playing judge and jury and saying, oh, this is this is hate speech or anti this or anti that or this is right wing propaganda or left wing propaganda right who are you to say that that's this is this is this is free speech so the idea that um, we're going to have um, that there has to be separate rules for uh, first amendment uh, in new media is bullshit right total crap first amendment is the first amendment if you want to YouTube and Google establish a platform uh, that invites the public to post. You have to also um, respect their First Amendment rights to free speech. If you start to infringe on those First Amendment rights to their free speech, then we have a serious, serious uh, problem. So That's all for now. I hope to see everybody that's in the New York area. Um, out with me on uh, March 7 at 2 p.m. I'll keep talking about it as we lead up to the date. Have a great day.